What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about Nidus and the build that I use for Nidus in Steel Path, especially in Steel Path, Void Cascades. Void Cascades are one of the best ways, if not the best way, to get the Arcanes that come from the new Zeraman update. But I've always felt that Nidus was probably the best, one of the best frames to use in the Void Cascades. The only problem that Nidus has really ever had is the fact that, well, he can't shield gate. He can save his life by building up 15 stacks, as you'll notice in the circle on the right. If I had 15 and I were to lose all my health and essentially die or go down, those 15 stacks would save me and go into undying state, which is invulnerable for five seconds, I believe. Keeping up with those stacks, especially as the enemies get harder and harder, and those stacks just keep disappearing and disappearing and disappearing. Eventually, those enemies are going to be so high level that they're pretty much one-shotting you, and those stacks are going to go down to zero, and you're just going to die. I've been using this new build that, that I created uh, over the past two days, just kind of forming, seeing what works and what doesn't, and I feel like I've found kind of the perfect recipe to make Nidus not only withstand a ton of damage, but also do a lot of damage, heal his teammates, his companions, sentinels, and himself, and a source of his own energy that's not the Xenoric Focus School. So let's get into the video and just see how good this Nidus build really is. First off, we're going to spawn in 20 Corrupted Heavy Gunners, which are at enemy level 160. And I cannot go any higher with that because I'm Mastery Rank 26. And these enemy levels are capped based on your Mastery Rank. So keep that in mind if you're ever in the Simulacrum. So what we'll do is just go ahead and spawn them. They are alive, so they will shoot at me. And I'll just go ahead and get them all together real quick just to calm things down. First off, you want to have one stack at least and we want to do an operator ability and I'll just go ahead and latch on to whoever it is that was unfortunate in that mess to catch that lasso and now I'm just gonna stand here and withstand this damage I'll just go down here in the middle of them I don't even care look at my health I am virtually untouchable on top of this if we spawn them again and I don't do any of that I'll just go ahead, be here in the middle of them, get knocked down a million times. That's fun. Yeah, that's great. That's really fun. Thank you. If we start to take damage, we can also heal ourselves. So now we're invincible and our health is already back up at max. And to top this off, get rid of some of this energy I'm sitting on. Latch them all together. And show you the well of energy that we just created. Uh, well, we didn't get to see him. Well, there's one. That gave us 180 energy. I'll do it again. And you can see all those energy orbs right there. Your teammates can pick these up as well as yourself, but I'm maxed out, so I can't pick up any more. So what is behind this build? Let's go ahead and take a look at Nidus. Uh, I will recommend the Cedo with Nidus, no matter what the build is, because the Cedo and his tentacles are just magic made in heaven. But it doesn't matter what three weapons you have. These are just my choices and my choices alone. So you don't have to have these to make this build any better or any worse. But looking under the hood of Nidus, First off, we have Growing Power, which applying status effects to an enemy with weapons will increase your ability strength by 25%. This is good because it doesn't have to be your weapon. It can be your companion or your sentinel. In this case, Lloyd was lighting them up before I even did anything, and I already had an ability strength increase. Match that with Coaction Drift, and that 25% will go up to 34% and whatever bonus that your squad mates are using in their auras as well. So really we're, we're looking at growing power being 34% bonus with this coaction drift attached. Three Umbral mods, yes we have these. Uh, Intensify and Vitality are the two main ones because these are the two we're focused on. The health pool being bigger and the ability strength being more. Umbral Fiber, probably not like a necessity, but it is good at least for the bonus of these two. Overextended for some range, it does take away some strength. We have flow for more energy max. Augur secrets, I know Nidus doesn't have shields, but that 24 ability strength is what we're looking for to cap out on his damage reduction. Gladiator resolve with 180% health boost, but that's not really why we're looking at it, even though it is a little icing on the cake. We're looking at that 10% crit chance per combo multiplier, which goes nicely with what I have the Chrono Prime set up right now. And lastly, adaptation. Probably the centerpiece, the foundation of this build. You grow immune to the damage being done to you. When it comes to arcanes, first we have Molt Vigor on Operator Ability, 39% Ability Strength on Next Warframe Ability Cast. So, if you're an Operator and you cast any ability, it doesn't matter, 
you'll have a little blue square around your Warframe. This denotes that you have an increase in ability strength and once you do any ability, that little square will go away. Pair this with the 34% coming from Growing Power and Coaction Drift and that turns Nidus' Parasitic Link 90%, which is actually the maximum damage reduction from Parasitic Link. You cannot go any higher than 90%. And last, Arcane Grace. If you don't have this, you can get this in Nightwave, actually. On health damage, 9% chance for a plus 3% health regeneration for 9 seconds. Of course, this is rank 2, but I feel like any damage that Nidus takes is going to be health damage, and why not have Arcane Grace as a backup just in case things go a little crazy. The main two focuses of this build are his Larva, his two and his parasitic link the strength and the range for me is very important especially when it comes to void cascades because you want to grab as many people as possible while also taking the least amount of damage as possible so we've talked about nidus's damage reduction and we've talked about nidus's way to control the crowd with his two we've also talked about the way to buff up his ability strength just before you use that parasitic link so that it does go up to 90 percent and you take virtually no damage the one thing we didn't talk about is the way to get yourself as much energy as possible. Now, of course you can use Nidus' larva and get everybody together and you can get all this energy that comes from them. However, the way that I have this set up, just in case Nidus has no energy, let's say I got hit by magnetic damage and I just have no energy to, to get any stacks to link with anybody, I have no energy to control the crowd, that's where the operator comes in. First of all, we can control the crowd with this and we can get our own energy from that same thing as well. If you missed it, I'll do it again. Operator controls the crowd and we get our own energy right up there. In Void Cascade, getting hit by magnetic damage or getting hit by a nullifier or whatever the case is, is very common. So it's good to have kind of a backup plan, even if it isn't the best. Of course, the operator is not gonna be grabbing them like Larva does, but in a pinch, it's actually not too bad. And if you wanna get as much energy as possible, you use the operator. So you might be wondering how I'm doing that. We are using, with the operator, we're using Emergence Dissipate, which I cannot show you, but that is one of the new Arcanes coming from Zeraman. Uh, I think it pairs really nice with Nidus and the way that I've kind of synergized this build around not only being a, a very good support Warframe for your squad, but also himself. He can take care of himself. He can heal himself, his companions, and his allies. Not only can he heal, but he can control the crowd and put all the enemies in a location. And when it comes to Void Cascade, you want to put them under those domes so that when you kill those enemies, it counts towards that round. And last but not least, he can also supply himself and his teammates with energy that is not in the Xenric School. Actually, I think this way is a better way to do it because you get all that energy right up front. It's not Xenric where it has to build up and build up, and if you get hit by magnetic damage, you go all the way back down to zero and slowly climb back up again. This is just an amazing build that I've had a lot of fun with when it comes to Void Cascade. And I know Emergent Dissipate has probably gotten a lot of hate because it did get nerfed, but I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. And I feel like, you know, being this self-sufficient, especially being more, more so of a solo player, or I play with my fiance, so our, our team is really only two people, unless we're helping somebody in the clan or something like that. But for the most part, the high level content, we just do ourselves. And to be able to help each other like that with energy or healing or crowd control, it's just a really good set of attributes to have when it comes to the chaos that Void Cascade can get to. Sometimes you don't even know what's going on. You're getting hit by nullifiers, you're getting hit by magnetic damage, you're getting hit by Thraxes, you don't have energy, so you can't do abilities. And sometimes you can't even use your Warframe because you're kicked out of it. You can get really crazy really quick in some of those spaces. So I hope this build has uh, kind of shown you some of the power and the strength that Nidus actually has when it comes to Steel Path and more so the Void Cascades. I love playing the Void Cascades. It can get really, really crazy, but those Arcane Rewards right now are keeping me a little bit more happy than normal, you know? Uh, just to see those Arcanes drop and uh, go ahead and build up on each one of them. Also using the Standing, of course, every day to get two or three of them but i think for the most part this has really helped me enjoy the void cascade which i think is the best way to get arcanes outside of buying them with standing and hopefully this helps you you know this is a steel path 
oriented build but you don't have to use it in steel path you can use it in standard and still be unkillable actually two times unkillable at that point so you know like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video talk to me down in the comments tell me what you're struggling with with nidus if you saw anything in this build that you have a question on how to get it then you know let me know down there and uh, we'll go over that so y'all have a good rest of your day i'm out of here man Peace.